Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a live stream. I have not done one of these in a long time. Hopefully everything goes smooth. I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody that's in here already. But just a big thank you to everybody who's been watching all the, the videos from fall camp. It's great to see so much interest and hopefully you like some of the new features I've been able to kind of implement here. And, you know, just keep watching and, and let's let, let's get right into it. So I wanted to do this question and answer session for the fall because I know many of you, maybe you don't catch all the videos or everything that's going on, but um, if you have questions that I'm not either addressing or you, maybe you missed it, if there's anything you have questions about um, or even just suggestions of maybe some guys you'd like to hear more about or, or see more about, um, definitely drop in the comments. I'm definitely going to read all those. Um, looks like the session, the chat session is working, so that's great. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Um, definitely drop in the comments if you can hear. Hopefully, no problems with audio right now. Let's see who, who we got in here. I know we got Mason. Definitely appreciate you. Hopefully, you know, best of luck in your new channel there. Um, and I think, yeah, I see that LBM Stay wants to go with Devontae Williams. You gold wires here. What's going on? Coke Dog, always appreciate you jumping on. Brother Jay Gl Blaze. I have not done one of these sessions in a long time, but I see many of you um, drop in the comments of the videos, which is great. So I definitely appreciate you. Um, Kyle's here. Daddy's farm is here as well. I'm glad you can hear fine. So that's good to hear. I, I guess let's start with Devante. I know many of you are curious and definitely drop in on the uh, on comments and questions. I, I will grab those as much as possible. But let's talk about Avante just real quick. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I did spend a little bit of time on him today. Coach Diaz addressed the situation. First off, I found it a little interesting that um, Coach Diaz did not release a statement once the charges were dropped. I thought maybe he was he would release a statement one way or the other. And so basically, we, we kind of sat for a few days wondering how he was going to address the situation. And then today at practice, he addressed it. Basically, was just asked, you know, chart, you know, simple question in the sense that, you know, here's the situation. Everyone knows about it. What's the plan moving forward? Will he be back on the team or, or, or not? And, and I thought it was interesting that Coach Diaz did not say that, you know, unequivocally he will not be back on the team, which certainly would have been an option. But he did say, you know, basically they're going through the documents. And then I thought this was interesting because he said that the decision makers um, will basically have a decision to make. And I thought that to be interesting. And I mentioned on the video at practice after practice the instant reaction that I found that to be interesting because it, it sounds like um, I felt like if he's not coming back, they would have definitely just said that today. Look, best of luck to him. Sometimes we see that in these situations. Look, best of luck to him. You know, hopefully he gets things figured out, but he's not going to be a part of this team. And he did not see that. So we will see. And it's a wait and see approach. Some people want to know my opinion. I, in the sense of what I think, I am surprised in the sense that based on things I've been hearing from multiple people, it just didn't sound like he was going to be back on the team. Um, I didn't really expect Coach Diaz to really leave the door open today. And I, so I was a little surprised with that. And, and then we'll see what happens moving forward. So, just a quick update, not a lot really to get into. I'm surprised. I would not expect him back. But based on comments today, it made it sound like that there's at least a possibility. Uh, and I'll just kind of leave it at that. So Kyle wants to know, how, how's my night going? Night's going good. I was able to um, watch the videos like you guys did on the ACC Network, we'll kind of gather some more information, and then kind of lead into this. So yeah, night's going well. Thanks for asking. Um, hopefully you're doing well too. It's all about the U1. It has a question about the throwback jerseys. Yeah, I'm always, you know, to be honest, I actually like when, when they kind of go new school. Uh, I like new designs. I like when teams, um, brands want to go with new designs. Um, so I always like that. Obviously, I like the old school stuff, but I, I like when they come up with new designs and, and not just go after um, what's been done in the past. That's just my personal opinion. I like when brands try to even be innovative and come up with new ideas. Um Mizzy DeCain wants to know how Blades is doing at safety. Look, when we have seen him out there, and and, and I want to make sure this is clear, I, I, don't, I don't want to act like we're out there every single day, and I don't want to act like 
you know, when we are when we are out there that we're able to see the entire practice. I want to make that clear because I don't want to misconstrue anybody. I want to, you know, be transparent with what we are able to see, which is about half of practice, about twice a week. It's kind of how it's been. We are going to be out there tomorrow. As far as Al Blades at safety, we've seen him at cornerback during drills, during the team drills. Also, we've seen him at corner. So we haven't seen him at safety. So I, I can't say that he has been at safety. Um, coach has been asked about Al Blades, how he's doing, and he mentioned him at corner. So we have to go f- go for what it is there. But he is getting a little work at nickel. So that is something to pay attention to. Um, as far as how he's looking, I think he's looking better and better each time. I do think he'll be ready for the Alabama opener. I like that he's been staying after practice. Um and doing some extra work. I, I think that's good. I think that's important just to, you know, make sure he's ready for that Alabama game. And I think some people ask about Al. I saw a comment in the section one time, uh, you know, just with Al, he like some people like the other corners, but I think there's a big difference between these four corners with experience with, with Al, DJ Ivy to Corey Couch and Tyreek Stevenson compared to that next group. I don't think you're going to see much of the next group. I know they're younger. I know maybe some of you guys like these guys for the future, but I think it's going to be a big difference in terms of snap counts with the top four compared to the rest. I would be surprised if somebody else cracks that rotation, especially in in game one. Now we will see with the next chunk of games, you know, once you start getting into Appalachian State, Michigan State, and Central Connecticut State, just those games are going to be different than, than what it looks like in the in the opener. But as far as the Alabama game, I think it's going to be your experienced guys, guys they can trust, guys that, that have been around and they know what to expect from the coaching staff. Kelly Green, I, I don't want to miss, hopefully I didn't miss any other questions before you, but if anybody else, if I missed your question before on the chat, scrolling through, but I'm picking up this one. How, how's Zach McLeod doing developing at defensive end? You know, I had a talk with, with Zach earlier in, the, in fall camp and he was really excited about the position, really liked – the in, ins and outs of the position really like the um, basically just kind of setting the offensive lineman up. And I thought that was interesting because sometimes you think defensive ends are just going off the, off the snap and, and he really is enjoying the, the, the techniques and the, the mind games essentially at that position. And head coach Manny Diaz mentioned tonight that, that Zach actually had his best scrimmage since he's been at UM regardless of position on Saturday I think that's a good sign I do think you'll see Zach a lot at defensive end I think you'll see the three guys rotate quite a bit between uh you know DeAndre Johnson Jafari Harvey and and Zach McLeod I think those three are ahead of even a Chance Williams who was getting second team reps but I, I think those are the three guys you'll see quite a bit I think they'll rotate between left and right end uh, but I, I think that that'll be a three-man rotation. Maybe you know you got to sprinkle on a fourth guy, but I think you'll see a big difference in terms of snaps with those three compared to the fourth guy. Eric, what's going on? More baseball content? Yeah, absolutely. I always enjoy it. Um, hopefully, you got something working uh, in the future. Hopefully, you guys like the Alex Terrell interview. I touched on Av- Avante Williams. You Goldwire is going on. Um, yeah, it must be something. I assume we're talking about Avante. Yes, there are details. That, that are out there, and, and certainly the the staff is going to have to evaluate everything there. Um, let's see. Yeah, as far as baseball, real quick, just Eric, I, I know you like always asking about baseball, and I, I definitely want to just stay on, on topic with fall camp because there's a lot to get to with the baseball team, but definitely want to do some content there um, aside from this. But just let me kind of get into this with fall camp kind of get into the swing of things, but I'll definitely will break it down. I had an article on, on a new cor- new catcher coming in from Vanderbilt recently on the website there. Um, Lewis, or Louis, I, I think it's probably Lewis, but decision makers, yeah, I thought that was interesting um, that he said that because I'm thinking like you're the decision maker and uh, that had been a great follow-up. It didn't get asked. I didn't ask it. I, I messed up. I felt like afterwards I was like, man, I wish I would have asked that question. But it's just kind of kind of rapid fire with these um, group interviews, these uh, media sessions afterwards. But it should have been asked. I should have done it. Um, it shouldn't have um, uh, because it, it's something that that you're asking. It's something I was curious about. But I got to think it's administrators, people above um, Blake. But it's certainly not going to be any anyone else on the coaching staff. I wouldn't think. I assume they're talking about that, unless he's talking about like a team vote or anything like that. I I don't know. I think we'll get more clarity as it comes up this week 
Adrian, what's going on? Glad you're here. Any word on the Hard Rock is going to let us tailgate this year? I have not heard. Um, sometimes we get emails on what Hard Rock is going to, you know, the policies and things like that. I know last year we were getting information in terms of, you know, crowd and size and um, kind of protocols and things like that. But I have not heard. I guess I just assume everything is going to be fine. But certainly um, with the way numbers are going but with the pandemic, certainly everything is up in the air with everything. So. Brother Jay Blaze, once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for dropping in the comments quite a bit. I always appreciate you. Um, question on the running backs. I think maybe just asking just a general, you know, how do they look? I think it's going to be Cameron Harris. I I, I know many of you, and, and there's been times I've been on video saying, I think it's going to be Don Chaney Jr. You've heard me talk about Jalen Knighton. I think he brings a lot to the table. Um, I just think it's going to be Cameron Harris. Uh, I, I do. I think it's going to, he's going to get the first crack. I think he's the one that's um, maybe looked the best or most consistent. However, we've not seen much outside of drills and with running backs, with us not being able to see guys actually hitting and tackling. I hate to really say too much on how guys are looking at that position, but just on, on kind of what we're seeing, I'm also not convinced that Don Chaney Jr. is all the way ready all the way past his shoulder injury. I think he has missed some time. I think that does set him back a little bit. I, however, I just expect all three of them to play. I'd be surprised. I know they want to go with the lead back. I know they want to work horse guy. I would just be surprised if they're going to put the other two aside, if they're all healthy for the opener. I think that all three of them will get in there at some point. Now, I do think that there's an opportunity because I do think that that's what they want. Obviously, if a guy gets in there and does well against Alabama, it's going to be his job. Um, I just find it, I find it's going to be a tough game to run against. Um, but I, I think Cam, if I were to pick the leading rusher for the season, I think it'll be Cam. Um, obviously, if everybody stays healthy and whatnot, but I, I do think uh, he's going to be the guy. I think in general, with how he looks, he looks great in the, the upper body. Honestly, he's gotten bigger. Um, I think anybody that sees him walking around campus, um, I think if you're there, if you're able to be at the stadium, if you see him in pregame warm-ups before they put on the shoulder pads, you will see a noticeable difference with Cam and his upper body strength. So he feels great, and I think that's a good sign. Miami Flow, what's going on? Always appreciate you. Keep up the good work. I know you do your Sunday night stuff, so hopefully everything's still going well with your with your streams. I have not done one of these in a long time. You guys motivate me. Um, guys like Flo and, and everybody else who's doing great work on, on their streams and, and channels. There's so many people um, where you can get information and analysis and also opinion for sure. So everybody's doing a great job. I appreciate everybody for, for motivating uh, for me for wanting to do this too. So um, let's see. Here's a question. Would you play John Ford and Jordan Miller more in the Alabama game? I know what you're saying because they're both big guys. Yeah, I, I think that's my you might have to do that. I've always been in the component. I've always been a believer with defensive tackle. And I felt like this as Jared Harrison Hunt was coming along. I like to have an agile guy there next to a big guy, even though I think it's sometimes more exciting. Let's you know, I, I heard the talk, hey, let's throw Nesta out there and Jared Harrison Hunt. Leonard is gonna be in that discussion because he's in that mold of the athletic defensive tackle. However, I like the the bigger guy. I think it's important. I, I think it's sometimes his stats don't always show up, but I think it's important to have a bigger guy there to really just get those reps. And yes, I, I think if if, a, if the smaller athletic guys aren't really getting a, the job done, you, you've got to think about mixing it up, going with Jordan and John up there up front and seeing if that changes things. I think you've got to think about that across the board because one of the things that – many things that makes Alabama successful is their size, whether it's up front at all positions really, but just up front in particular. And I think you've got to be ready to counter that. I think you've got to do things um, to have a chance. I think you've got to do things to maybe counter uh, what Alabama is doing as opposed to just rolling out what you think is the best for your team. And I think that I think you've just got to have a different approach for this game compared to how you go into ACC play and essentially every other opponent you face this year aside from maybe a Clemson. But Alabama's a different animal. I think I think Miami's going to find that out in the first quarter, one way or the other, good or bad. Um, but I think you've got to be ready to make adjustments. And, I, and I, that's why I always talk about with depth chart or projections, I think things might change as the season goes on. I think when you talk about freshmen in particular, I know people are excited about guys, but I just don't see it happening in this opener. Uh, if we're talking about freshmen, I think 
two guys. I think Elijah Royal will have a role. I think Leonard Taylor as the fifth defensive tackle will have a role. I think James Williams will be out there on, on special teams. But if you're talking about the opener, those are the, the freshmen I see really um, getting a lot of playing time or, or really making a difference there. Measy is night and suspended. I have not heard, you know, coach, uh, Heel, heels dropping in with the beard. Appreciate it. Um, as far as suspension goes, Coach uh, Diaz was asked at last week, look, are all guys going to be available? That means, you know, injuries, suspensions, the whole thing. And, and he kind of just said he expects everybody other than some long-term stuff. However, he didn't directly, he, he was not directly asked, hey, are guys suspended? However, you know, with that being said, he did not say, look, nobody is suspended. He has not come right out and said that. So we just have to wait and see. And I think it happens all the time with college football. It's happened at Miami. It's happened with other teams. Yes, guys are sometimes suspended for the opener for whatever reason in the offseason, things that don't come out um, in the news or if things happen or if guys are suspended for a half or whatever it might be. But as far as we know, nobody is suspended. I don't know, you know, I don't want to speak on everybody's um you know, th- their own personal things. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, we don't always, what I'm saying is we don't always know everything about these players. However, with Jalen Knighton, I would be surprised if he was a guy that was suspended just on based on the little things that I know about him or what I do know about him, I guess. Um, so, yeah, nothing to report there. There was a question. I need to scroll up real quick. I, I only got the, co- I forgot I can scroll up here. Eric wants to know on the take on the Alabama game. Can yeah. Can Miami beat Alabama? I think that's a big question. Everybody wants to know. Um I I don't see it. I, I just don't. I know people are excited. I know I'm not trying to crush anybody's dreams. Anything can happen in the opener. I do find it interesting that um the one thing that, that Mark Rick spoke about, yes, Coach Rick spoke after practice as well as Coach DS. He was on campus today. He said for for any team to have a chance of beating Alabama, you've got to have really good play out of your quarterback. And there's been breakdowns on, on inside the U on, on the site. David Lake's done those, you know, what it's taken for a team to beat Alabama. And all of those games, the quarterback has really just got on fire. And I think for Miami to have any shot, and I'll have an article on this tomorrow about this on, on the website. Look, if Miami's going to have any chance of the upset, De'Ara King has to be at his best, plus plus type of performance. We, I think he's definitely has those performances in him. We did not see that against Clemson. We we saw it at times throughout the year. Um, he just has to be really really good, and, and for Miami to have a shot. And the reason why I, I don't expect them to win this game, I think, it just goes back to me what Miami did against North Carolina and Clemson last year. I can't get that out of my mind. I know Alabama um, has a lot of new faces, but in particular, how they struggled against the run, in particular, um, we're just, they look outclassed in terms of their ability in, in those games. And to expect that to turn around immediately, I just don't expect it, but that's why we're all here. We're all hoping you know, to see something that we haven't seen or, or we're not expecting. And I think in general, I think a lot of Miami fans do feel the same way. Yes, not expected to win, almost three touchdown underdogs, hard to win those games. But I think many of you guys are going to be very disappointed if they don't compete. If you lay, if you come out flat, if you get blown out, um, essentially if it looks similar to that LSU game, I know Miami get those touchdowns later where it kind of uh, changed the scoreline a little bit, made it look a little bit better. But Miami is getting flat out blown out in that game. And I, I think that's your fear. I think you want to have excitement with this team. A lot of guys coming back, Dear King, you know, you're hoping for a big season, a really good season. Hopefully they can reach that 10 win plateau, something that hasn't happened much over the last 20 years. Um, and, and I think, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, I think you want to see a team that's competitive. And, and I do think that there is a such, you know, that yes, there is a such thing as a moral victory. I think if Miami comes, you know, plays competitively, which did not happen in those games last year against better opponents. I think that they can build on that. I don't, think that they'll be as crushed um you know with their mindset you definitely don't want to to come out and and see uh play play poor, poorly in the first game uh, there were some comments about the hat i appreciate everybody for, for dropping them i always try to mix it up on the hats i've got some new ones coming that i have not used 
yet in videos. I'm always trying to mix up the hats, but yeah, had to do this one. Huge fan of the of the show there. Okay, I I, I feel like I'm, I'm rambling around a little bit too much. I need to go to these questions. Kelly, okay, good. I, I'm glad you appreciate the the information. Clinton Tyler wants to know about Keontra Smith. Yeah, you spelled it right. Um, they like him. The staff likes him. They like his ability to make plays. He is undersized linebacker. There's no question about that. We have not, honestly, I've not seen a linebacker his size. Um, he figures to be a starter the way it looks. I know Wayman Steed, Bradley Jennings are back, but they really like Keontra, what he's done. Um, I can't think of a, a, a linebacker that's been smaller than Keontra that started. Obviously, guys get in there. Um, and I don't want to speak on, yes, there's probably been a, a freshman or a young, you know, a guy that just gets in there sometime. Um, but yeah, he's an undersized linebacker, but they really like his aggressiveness. They like that he can cover. They like that he likes to tackle and wrap up. I think that they're hoping that they can utilize his speed to the outside, hopefully track down runs to the outside, which gave Miami fits last year. So they like his tackling ability. They like his aggressiveness. Um, and, and so we'll see. Um, I think he's going to get a shot at, at a lot of playing time. Uh, there's other guys in there, but certainly I think he's definitely one of those top three linebackers that Miami is looking to use. I know they like Corey Flagg, but if we're talking about if we're talking about two of the younger guys between those two, Keontra, we've just heard more about um, that he's done more, uh, made more plays uh, and scrimmages, and and done better at this point, which is a little surprising because there was a lot of talk about Corey going into this year, and and not that he can't have that a breakout year or be the main inside linebacker, but we've just not heard his name mentioned that often. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We, we still got, you know, a little less than two weeks before the opener. So maybe we will hear more about Corey, but um, Keontra, we're just hearing more about. Lewis, is there any group position the Hurricanes have an advantage in the Alabama game? In an honest opinion? Well, yeah, obviously Miami has more experience at quarterback. Um, but they're really excited about what uh, Alabama is really excited about what they have there at quarterback. So I think that's a, that could be uh, an advantage um, just because of the experience. And it's not just the experience. Eric's a good player. Like he's a really good player and he, and he's shown it. I know there was a question earlier I missed about somebody asked, is Derek hundred percent look as far as everything that we've seen. And I've said this, like if you went out to practice tomorrow or at any point, during fall camp, you wouldn't, and you didn't know he was hurt. You wouldn't say, "Hey, he looks a little slowed by by something." I don't know what it is, but honestly, if you went out there tomorrow, you wouldn't know that he had been hurt. Um, and I think that's a great sign. He has flashed his ability to run. He's still making plays in the passing game. I think he's very comfortable with the offense. Back for a second year, really feels good about it. But I think also he likes the playmakers. He knows what he has at running back. He knows exactly what he has at tight end with Will Mallory. And then at receiver, like he, they get a couple of guys that are going to be in the mix of this year that were not last year, and Keyshawn Smith and Charleston Rambo. But he's worked with them all spring. They've they've essentially been out there the whole time. Um, as far as we know, they have not been dinged up at all, and um, he's gotten a lot of reps. Those guys have been first team guys for a long time now, so he knows what he has in the receivers, and I think he feels good about it. So I think that's a position. I think that's the position you have to look at. You're hoping from a Miami standpoint that maybe there is going to be a little bit of a drop off with the quarterback position at Alabama. Maybe you're not going to get the best. I think maybe if we look back, I kind of compared to the LSU, the way Joe Burrow played the rest of his career at LSU or even the next season when he, when he won the Heisman trophy was not the same guy that we saw him play against Miami. He was good in the game, but they relied on the running game. And I think that could be, I think maybe if that's what you're hoping for, that maybe um, that that somehow you can kind of disrupt what Alabama is going to do in the passing game. I think that's your hope for Miami and, and maybe make them one-dimensional. But if they are, you've got to be able to stop the run. I'm not convinced that this team is going to be able to stop the run. But if they do, then then we'll see. I think then then you got a shot. But I think as far as a position group, I think that's that's where you got to go to. I think that's the most obvious one. I think just real quick. Uh, I, I want to get to these questions, but in general, I think one of the biggest question marks with Miami, yes, they've got experience coming back. My biggest question mark, my biggest thing that I want to see is, are they just going to be similar to what they were last year? 
in, in, in terms of production, are they going to be similar players? Are they going to grade out similarly to what they did last year? Or are you going to see guys with experience take a noticeable jump in their play? We've seen it at times over the years, but I think that's what you're, I think that's, if Miami's going to have one of those really good seasons, you know, whether it's beating Alabama or just winning the Coastal Division, they've got to have their top line guys be better than they were a year ago. And I think that's the biggest question. I think even Derek needs to be better than he was a year ago. Running, I think all these guys, honestly, I think Cameron Harris at running back, be better than he was a year ago, more reliable, more consistent. Offensive line, great that they have uh, returning guys, but they've got to be better. And I think all across the board, it's great that you have the experience. Other teams are going to be experienced too, but that that's my biggest takeaway. I think my biggest question going into the season because if not, if they're similar to what they were last year, I think you, you might find yourself running into some games where they're going to lose some games that you're, you're kind of hoping that they would have won. Um, if guys are kind of playing at, at a, maybe even just an average level, if that makes sense, average to good, if they're kind of just in that mid-range, you can get tripped up in, in wins and losses um, there. Okay, l- let's get through th- some questions. You guys hear me ramble all the time. I did not want to do that with this video. Dennis, uh, yeah, I'm live here. Appreciate it. First time in a long time. The size of our – Daddy wants to know, Daddy's Farm, how does the size of our O-line compare to Bama's D-line? D-line for Alabama is really big um, all across the board, uh, across the defensive ends and the defensive tackles. I remember last year, you know, kind of evaluating Miami's offensive line. It's not the biggest line now. You're getting bigger this year with Navon Donaldson being inserted in essentially – over a guy like Ja'Kai Clark. I think Jalen Rivers is a, is another guy that has good size. And then we'll see what they do at tackle. But um, you're getting some some more uh, strength, more uh, bulk up front at the guard positions. Uh, because, again, Navon going in. is Okay, so Navon's bigger than DJ Scaife that played the right guard position. And then Jalen Rivers is bigger than Ja'Kai Clark. So you're getting bigger at the guard positions than a year ago. That's a good sign because I do think – Miami needed to get a little bit bigger. I also like the athleticism, both of those guys, for being big guys. I think I think you'll see it. I think they should be able to get out and pull on run plays and, and make uh, blocks downfield, which is what you're hoping for. Let's see, what, what else have we got? Um, Lakers all day. Always appreciate you for being here. We got, we got a new, uh, new person. Got the notification here. Okay. Let's see, Sean, I th- you're looking for that close Miami win. That'd be an upset. That'd be big time for sure. Adrian, what's going on? Okay, who's looking to be the second string quarterback? Van Dyke or Garcia and Restrepo? Okay, Wes Welker was. Okay, I understand why what you're doing with that comparison. If you look at Wes Welker's stats in college, they were flat out ridiculous. I remember watching him in college. Uh, he did it all in the return game. Uh, big time stats, big time numbers, and how to... Had a monster career in the NFL. Um, really a prototypical slot guy. But anyways, I'm, I'm glad you have high hopes for Restrepo. They do like him. They do like what he's bringing to the table. I want to talk about the second string quarterback situation just a little bit. Um, I, I would not be surprised if they make an announcement, if they go with Tyler Van Dyke um, to be the guy. He's got a year more of experience than Jake. It's not that... It's not that he's necessarily just been a lot better than Jake. I just think they feel comfortable with Tyler being being a little bit more experienced, and then I think Tyler's done well enough um, to earn that job. And just like Jake, I don't think either of them have, from what we've heard, from what we've seen, have looked really bad. I don't think accuracy is really an issue with these guys. Um, I think they're just going to fall in line with Van Dyke at the two uh, spot and then Garcia at three. I think what will be interesting is. What will happen if they have to go to one of those quarterbacks on a full-time basis um, this season? Whether it's for a full game, two or three quarters, something like that. Who will they go with? And can that person, if it is Van Dyke, can he hold off the the other guy? Can can he hold him off? I think that's when the the battle really begins. If if it's one of those things where they have to go in and go with the guy. Otherwise, I do expect it to be Tyler. I don't. I don't. Uh, we will see how things go next season. If you were to ask my prediction for next season, I expect it to be Jake. But for this year, I, I do think Tyler um, has the edge um, in the coach's mind. I think they'll just kind of go with that. I think 
Um, we'll see. I don't think um, I don't think it'd be a huge I don't think it'd be a huge deal e- either way. Whatever they do, although if Jake's the number two, I, I don't see that change, and I don't think Tyler will have a chance on, on passing him if they are ready or ready to go to Jake. If that makes sense, so hopefully you understand what I'm saying with that si- situation. All right, what do we got here? Mason, I don't know much about Notre Dame. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, are they overrated? It's hard to say. So I don't want to say stay, say too much there. I've not looked uh, much into a lot of other teams, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, Lloyd, definitely. I, I've been watching it lately, but yeah, always was a, always a, was a fan. Um, there's so much, so much good. And if you have any other recommendations, I, I mentioned earlier about the hats. Like I always enjoy uh, coming up with new stuff. I've got some stuff I haven't used yet. I always like the retro stuff. Um, I'm in kind of a 90s kick right now, as you can tell, but if you've seen some of the hats. But anyways, just the, the style I like right now. Um, okay, Lewis. Okay, Chris, for this year, do you see the Canes physically bigger? Um, yeah, I think at certain positions, I th- I touched on the Cameron Harris thing. Um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying about being small compared to the SEC. Yeah, I think that has to do with recruiting. I think there's only so much um, certain guys can can get bigger. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Okay, linebacker, they're not very big at linebacker. It's noticeable. Wide receiver, I think they're lacking size at wide receiver. I think that's noticeable. I like the size at tight end. Will Mallory's got good height. And I think um, Elijah Royo's very good size for a freshman. Um, I, I think you guys will be impressed with him um, for not just this year. I think he'll make plays this year, but I think for his career, I think he's going to be the next guy. I, I, honestly, I think, I, and I, you guys, if you know me or paid attention to things I've talked about over the years, I don't like to jump right out and um, proclaim too early on guys. You know, So you know I don't like to say that um, until I see it, until it's proven, but I, I really think highly of Elijah, what I've seen. Um, defensive back Tyreek Stevenson's as big as a corner as you'll see. DJ Ivy has good size. Um, you know, at safety, Bubba, Bubba has good size. Grovin Hall's on the smaller side. So just kind of um, gauging their defensive line. They've got some two big tackles. John Ford and pads. I mean, it's as, as big of a defensive tackle as you'll see. Um, and then Jordan Miller's got good size. They really like what he's bringing to the table with the offseason moves that he made. And he's just, in case you guys didn't know, he's one of the strongest guys on the team. Um, you know, N- Nesta's not the biggest. Jared Harrison Hunt is right at that 285 mark. Um, and then Leonard Taylor, you know, has good size. Kind of in between those guys, between um, the Ford-Miller group and then um, with Jared and, and Nesta. So anyways, across the board, there's certain positions that they could have bigger size with. Um, there's certain positions that they're fine. Um uh, so, so we'll see. Oh, and obviously a quarterback, you guys know, obviously Derek's not the biggest. Um, let's see. What else do we got here? Okay. I want to keep going. What's going on with Isaiah work Walker? Yeah. I think, I think you guys saw the tweet last night. I'm concerned about him. I think everybody is and, and hopefully he's doing okay. Um, and, and getting the help he needs. So, um, I think anybody that's paid attention to that and, and you guys have heard me, um, kind of address mental health health stuff on, on here. So hopefully he's doing okay. And, and all, I think many of, of us will be thinking about him. Um, let's see, Dennis, Rohan Marley. Uh, yeah, as far as counter, I, I didn't cover Rohan when, he, when he's been here. I've seen Rohan in person when he's come back to UM. Uh, yes, I know he was a smaller guy. I think Rohan was one of those... Um, just a lot different kind of a, a guy that was really unique with what he was able to do with his size. Jason, what's going on? You want to know about Jake Garcia? I, th- I think, man, I am way behind on my questions. Okay, real quick. I like his makeup. I think he's one of those personable guys. You see him working out. Um, he, he has, you know, before and after practice kind of a guy or after practice we see him. Um, I think he's a guy that gets well, gets along well with his teammates from what we've seen. Um, from what I've seen, I think if you touch on the intangibles, he seems to have everything you're looking for in a quarterback. I really liked, I was really impressed with what he did last year in high school. Um, the ability to do what he did from moving to California to Georgia and fitting in with success, I thought was good. Um, I like I like how he looks in drills. I, I, I He throws a good ball. I think he looks good out there. He has good composure, good poise. Certainly, like Coach Rick said, we will see how quarterbacks look when they get out there once they get the opportunity. 
Um, but I think as of now, there, there's a lot to like about Jake. As far as the bad, I, I don't really have much bad to say. Uh, I think interceptions are always going to be uh, important for young players. And then also, um, yeah, I just haven't heard much bad. And and it's not to say that we've heard much bad about Tyler either. Once again, he's been doing well in, in drills and looks the part and he's got good size and seems to really work hard at the position. So I think the both of those guys, um, you're hearing more positives as young players than we heard from young players in the past um, at UM with the quarterback position. So I think Jake has a chance to be really good. Um, once again, I don't say that too often about young guys, but I, I definitely think that about him. Okay, here we go. Jordan Miller breakout year. I think Jordan Miller can be a reliable guy. I don't see him being a breakout guy in the sense I don't think he'll be a top two guy. I think John Ford will still be that bigger defensive tackle, but I think Jordan can really find a role. Um, I think he can be productive in his role. I think that's that'll be the goal for him. And then um, when John leaves, maybe Jordan can really step up into an elevated role of being a high impact player. That's what you're hoping for out of him. Who will start a punt return? I know they 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 seem to really like Tyreek Stevenson. That one surprised me, but I guess they like his reliability. Um, I, I think if I were to pick, I'd say I, I guess I'd I'd pick him. It'd be surprising. We don't see many defensive players do that. I know they like Restrepo. I think Restrepo struggled last year. Um, they like Mike Harley in the return game. I think Mike might be used a little bit more in the kick return with Keyshawn Smith. So if I were to pick, I'd pick those two at kick return and Tyreek at, at punt return. Although uh, we will see, and I think it could be, um, I think it can fluctuate. Certainly there. Okay, here, here we go. Number eighty-eight. So we got a yeah, the walk-on. Um, I, I know you're you're excited about him, Dante Johnson. So we'll contribute. It's hard. I think Miami's got seven receivers um, in the mix. I know they want to go to six. I think seven is who they'll they'll roll with. I think all those guys have a chance of playing. I think real quick, if you just the run down the top three guys, Harley Rambo and Keyshawn Smith, top three, that next group has four guys. I think Xavier Restrepo in the slot with kind of Mark Pope there can kind of go outside too with D Wiggins. And then Michael Redding the third, I think is, is shown that he should be or deserving of a shot. I think those are seven guys that, that you'll see sprinkled in at times in the Alabama game. And then we'll see that number can cut down to five to six. If, if they want to, I, I don't think the freshmen are ready re, ready yet for the Alabama game just because uh, there's a lot that goes into that, but we will see how they progress. Um, so in terms of question, Dante Johnson, I don't see him getting a, uh, a role early. We will see. I think he's a good enough player that he could play at other schools. It's tough, not just at Miami because he's a walk-on, but because they do have a lot of guys. And if you're talking about slotting guys in, if Jacoby George is looking good and Romello Brinson, then where does Dante Johnson fit in? Even though he, I think he's the biggest receiver they have, so maybe he can find a role. And the key will be if there's anything he can do on special teams. But I think a guy like that is anytime you're buried on the depth chart, those games where you get in, you just have to do well. Maybe he makes a couple plays and, and kind of can see his role increase, and then we'll see what happens. That, that's kind of the trajectory he's looking at. So here we go. Marley Mar, what's going on? Shout out to you. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, I, I don't really <laughs> – the beard is just going, man. I, I don't know what to say. I know people make comments, and, and it gets criticism too, but I don't know. It's just doing what I'm doing here. What else do we go? You Goldwire, do you think Manny is in trouble if he only wins nine games? I think it'll be a disappointing season because if you're looking at nine, um, is it really a step up? I don't know about in trouble, but I think if you're looking at the roster, you're hoping that this year can really create some momentum into next year and kind of pick up steam in recruiting with this class. Um, I don't know if in trouble is the right term. I think if if you're talking about job security, I think you're looking at like if it if it goes down to six or seven, something like that. That's what we've seen in the past at Miami. You know, once those coaches, you know, essentially get to that nine win, once it cuts back to six or seven, that's that's essentially a, a red flag. I think there'll be a lot of disappointing people um, if if it gets down to to that. I think, you know, what does nine wins look like? You know, was there an injury? That kind of thing. It's hard to say. Um, I wouldn't say he's in trouble. I, I think the fan base certainly wants more. And um, I think I think the disappointing part is you're looking at this year as being one of those years where they could really win a lot. Hold on. 
um, just because they have so many veterans back across the across the, the field, it's not that they don't have good young players, but if you're talking about having a good season, um, you're kind of eyeing this one as one of those good years um, if, if they have to drop back next year. Okay, what else do we got here? George is here. Shout out to you. What's going on? Defensive line. Eric wants to know about the defensive line. I think with the defensive line, it's going to be a drop off. There's not a Jalen Phillips on the roster. There's I don't think there's a Quincy Roche. I think the defensive ends have a lot to prove. I think that they the staff does like the guys. I'm curious where they where they're going to be. Are they going to be kind of more in the Joe Jackson role? Can they be the Jonathan Garvin type of guy? Um, Garvin did have some productivity while at UM, even though it did drop off that last year. But we will see how they fit in. DeAndre Johnson is a guy that they're expecting a lot of uh, transfer from Tennessee, and he's excited to kind of play this more of a traditional 4-3 defensive end as opposed to being that 3-4 um, kind of outside guy. Um, so he's excited. He's Look, all of his d- defensive ends – or particularly with DeAndre and and Zach, because they talk about a lot lot of experience. They're trying to learn as much as possible. They're really relying on the the former guys quite a bit uh, just to talk to them. Sorry. (laughs) I just realized I have headphones on for no reason. I've been doing live stream. I've been, okay, I need to take these off. I've been doing these other videos, if you've seen the Madden series and things like that, where I have to do the, the headphones. Anyways, I'm, I caught, caught off guard here. Okay, um, defensive line. And then the defensive tackle. I think they've got a lot to, to prove too, but I think it can be a solid group. I understand why Coach Diaz keeps talking about them um, because he feels like they can be a little bit better, um, a little bit more improvement um, from a year ago. And, and you see a group that, Look, if, if Jordan Miller is your fourth guy, if Leonard Taylor is your fifth guy, you're feeling gr- good about the group. Um, you want to see all those guys make improvements. You don't have that dominant guy from what we've seen from these guys. Nesta's a solid player, not dominant. And John Ford, same thing, solid at times, but not dominant. So I think if we're talking about how good can the defensive line be, I think it has to be a collective group. I think you have a lot of guys that have played a lot of football. The key will be, you know, the depth and, and then just, you know, everybody playing their role and being um, productive in their roles. I, I don't think you have these necessarily, these huge standouts. I know everyone's excited about Leonard, but it just, at this time, there's guys in front of him. Um, but I think you're going to be excited about Leonard. You're going to see him flash. I know people are excited about Jared Harrison Hunt and how he has flashed um, since he's been at UM, but you're going to see it from Leonard. Um, the hype is real, essentially. Um, it's pretty clear to see, and he's got a chance to have a really bright future at UM and beyond. Okay, here we go. Phil DeCane, what's going on? I touched on Avante. Uh, that was the very first topic I got to. You can watch this back. I, I don't want to get too much into that because there's a lot of things I'm not getting to. A lot of people have questions. Um, but definitely, once this is over, you can watch this back. Um, and, and you can, if you... If you got most of it, you don't have to watch the whole thing. Again, Avante, I jump right into it for a few minutes. Mark, what's going on? I'm glad you're here. You want to know about James Williams? And I forgot to mention this, and I was saving it for the stream tonight. But So I, I asked Zach McLeod about Z- James Williams. And the reason was, I even told J- uh, Zach about it, was like, we've not talked to many defensive backs. Uh, we've not been able to talk to defensive backs coach, T- Tavares Robinson, or DeMarcus Van Dyke to get some perspective on on how James is doing. Bubba talked at the beginning of, of fall ball, and you touched on it just a little bit. But So I asked Zach. You know, Zach's a guy that's been around. You know, he knows football. I, I want to get his take on what he's seeing from James, and he had some good things to say about Leonard. Um, but with James, he said, obviously, he runs well at his size. The athleticism is there. Um, it's clear to see, and he likes that. But what he's most impressed with, and, and I think this is great, and, and I didn't ask about specifically about this topic. I, I try to, and I try to always do that. I try to let things be open ended, where the player um, or anybody I'm interviewing can kind of take the the question and, and run it a different directions, however they want to go. But he mentioned his work ethic, and I think if you're excited about James Williams as an athlete, what he looks like, it, it's great playmaking ability, the whole thing, but. For Zach to mention his work ethic, I think is important. Um, I think you want that in all players, uh, obviously, but especially those super talented guys because that's where you get a chance to really grow as a player. If you've got that work ethic, in you know combining with your talent, then you got a chance to to have a really bright future. 
And I think hearing that early on, even though it does not look like James is going to have a huge role um, with the base defense at this time um, early on, um, although I think he'll get in there at safety and I think they do want to keep Amari Carter at striker. So I do think you'll see that that second group. I think James can get in there at times, but I, I do expect um, Bubba and Gervin to handle a majority of the snaps. But so basically my thoughts on, on James Williams are, I really like that. Um, how, what Zach had to say about his work ethic. That is stuff you heard about in the summer. Um, kind of heard, heard that a little bit too. So I think that's a good sign that it's continuing. So he's got a shot um, to be really good and, and we're, we'll see. I think what's great just in general, what's great about these freshmen, these young players is they do not have to be uh, thrusted into action to, to have huge roles on this team. I think that's a good thing. I think ideally that's what you want with the program. Yes, all freshmen want to play, but I think with development and I think those guys can just sit back a little bit and just worry about getting better, understanding everything that that it's ta- that it takes to be successful, understanding defensive scheme, all of these things. Um and then and not have a huge role on the team. I think that's good. I think we've seen that at Miami in the past work really well for some of these guys because year two, then it, then it's go time in year two um, because, you you know, even a sophomore is still an underclassman, but year two, I mean, you really know a lot and, and you can gain a lot of experience in year one. So I think it's good across the board that there's not a lot of freshmen that have to be um, playing or, or have lead roles right from the get-go. And I think a lot of these guys can do well on special teams. I think it'd be great if, if they really just get excited about that role and um, and that becomes their identity or, or whatever that might be. Um, so just a couple things on, on some of the freshmen. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Tight end position. We might have an advantage there. Yes, I that, that's one that I do think the tight end position is always unique because if you have a good tight end, you can use that to your advantage. Yes, you might not like you might be struggling in the run game. You might be struggling to get the ball to your wide receivers, but in a one game setting, if you can get your tight end going, maybe create some mismatches um, and, and create some opportunities in the passing game that can kind of give the other team a little bit of struggle. I think that's always a positive. That's why the tight end position is so unique and, and can be such a uh, pivotal thing for an offense. Um, it can really help. Uh, give your offense versatility. So as far as um, an advantage, they've got some good tight ends at Alabama, but I, I know what you're saying. Um, as far as you like Miami's linebacker or tight ends. So I think there's a lot to like too. Um, what else have we got? More questions, more questions. I need to go to this. Andres Borgales. We've not heard anything, Adrian, about how he's doing. All we've heard is that it's his job and uh, they're expecting big things from him. He's a guy that showed that he can bounce back from a poor practice to have a good one in the spring, and they really like his talent. I think you're, you'll be impressed with how well he he strikes the ball for a young player, and um, and then we'll see we'll see how he does in big games. I think it's going to be great. I've seen you know you've seen you know kickers at, at a young age do well. I, one that strikes me off the top of my head, and this is because it's when I started covering the team. But John Petty did a great job as a freshman. And I, and I say that because, you know, his numbers are really good, kicking field goals at, with a with a big role. But also, it's a big deal when you're kicking for a team in the top, you know, top 15, top 10, that, that essentially when he was doing it, competing for a national title. So there's a lot of pressure. And I think Borgales is going, going to see that. It's a big game against Alabama. But um, the, if the talent's there and they like his makeup, I think if he can – Make one, you know, do well against Alabama. That can really help his confidence. And there won't be another game like that the rest of the regular season, even though that UNC game um, figures to be huge. I like that show, boy. What's going on? I know I'm getting a lot of compliments with the hat. That means a lot. I appreciate it. It reminds me back on this uh, this Kevin Hart thing that he did an interview one time. Um, he was talking about how he got a new watch. He ended up taking it back because nobody complimented him on his new watch. Obviously, my hat doesn't compare to a new watch that he would be wearing, but I would not take this hat back, but it's new. It's the first time I've worn it on video um, and, and I'm happy to have it. So I'm happy I'm getting some recognition on the hat. So appreciate everybody there. Okay. Let's, let's keep this going. We are, I said I would only do this for one hour. It's nine 56. I want to keep this thing going. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling energized with questions. I'm glad there's so many people in here. Shout out to everybody that's been here. I apologize for missing questions. I'm scrolling back through. I've not done one of these in a while, so bear with me. But drop in the comments, even if you feel like you, you it's already been said. Um, if I missed you, I apologize, but I'm going right through. 
Um, yes, strongest guy on the team. Yeah, that's what he said. Good, good, good catch there. That's what Zach said. What else have we got? Okay. Jeff Lynn, I, I saw, appreciate you always dropping on the comments. I saw this comment. I wanted to address it on the stream. Um, I, I touched on it earlier about any player suspended. I'll, I'll just say it once again real quick, but Coach Diaz was asked if everybody's going to be available, um, was not specifically asked about the word suspension, but he said yes, expecting everybody um, aside from some long-term guys, so you can kind of figure in some injuries there. But he was not specifically asked, hey, is anybody suspended? And then he did not use the word, everybody is fine, nobody is suspended. So wait and see. It happens in the openers for all teams. Um, so we will see, but there's nothing to report at this time. But I also don't want to report that there are no suspensions because there could be, um, it's not been addressed at this time. So I do think as we are actually getting into Alabama, um, week, I think next week, press conference, I think that will be asked. I'll be sure to ask it if it's not asked already. Paul, I've touched on Al Blades. He's coming back. I do expect him to play. I think he's working hard to get back. Austin Cave has been out there. Um, Kane Bound, what's going on? Yeah, Austin Cave has been out there. I've not touched on him much, but um, yeah, he was banged up a little bit, but he's been out there. So what else we got? Man, I need to catch up on these. I'm doing a bad job, but I know you guys are great. And I appreciate your patience. Mitchell, who's a more disappointing loss, Bama, Clemson in the title game, or UNC? Um, yeah, I, I think if I were to pick one of those, I'd say UNC. Um, you're hoping for that. I know it's going to be a tough game, but you know the way UNC is kind of going, what happened last year, I think it would be disappointing because you're trying to win the Coastal. It'd be hard to win the Coastal if you don't beat UNC. Oh my goodness, I can't read this well. But anyway, it's a question. I uh, miss most of the program. You can always go back and watch this. When this is over, We can, um, you can watch it back. It's available immediately, so you can watch it back if you have time to watch it later. Um, I'd appreciate that for sure. David Crawford, starting linebackers. I think they like Keontra Smith. I know they like Wayman Steed and Bradley Jennings. I would kind of lean towards more the, the veterans with, with those guys, have a little bit more experience. I I just think that they like Keontra Smith. I think they're going to give him that first crack. Um, and, and if Bradley is, again, assuming he's ready to go, I think he'll be in there. It, I don't know. I just think across the board, it, it's hard to, to say who they're going to go with, but it just feels like they're going to go with the, that veteran guy. So I guess if I were to project a man i can't I, i'm i'm fumbling it here um steve and, and jennings just seem like the guys but again keontra was getting the first team reps uh, and they really like what he did in the scrimmage so I, I think they'll definitely give him a shot and Corey flag they like him too so i think a mix of those four i think if i were to guess depending on how they play during the game i think their reps will be fairly similar um i'm not convinced that they, they know exactly that there are two guys um, out in front, and I think we saw this quite a bit last year if you look at the reps. Um, and once again, everybody on inside the U uh, will have those reps from pro football focus um, in terms of how many play snaps everybody gets after games. We definitely like to pr provide that for our VIP subscribers. Um, and as far as like who I would go with at linebacker, I'd probably go with the, the veterans. I, I think Keontra, I know like, I touched on earlier, they like his aggressiveness. I'm concerned about his size, particularly against Alabama. But we'll see. I've not, King Kong, I've, I've not mentioned Huff. Um, I think he's a distant guy. I think he just has work to do um, to, to really understand. I don't think he's a guy in the mix at this point. He's one of those young guys that has to do well when he gets his opportunities. I don't think it'll come against Alabama. I would be surprised um, based on what we've seen with reps. He's getting a lot of third team reps um, from when we've been out there. Athleticism, yes, but I, th I still think he's working through understanding the defense and understanding his role and knowing exactly what to do out there. David, gl glad you liked the live the live one. I I'd like to do this more often. It's tough, and also I, I feel like I'm, I'm repeating some of the same stuff as these other videos. Hopefully you guys like those, um, kind of the instant reaction. And um, I kind of got the suggestion about doing the live commentary um, during the drills, and, and hopefully you guys are liking those. I, s I felt like I struggled on that last one, um, really provide information. kind of. Um, but anyways, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow with it. 
looking forward to that. Caesar's here. Okay, any concerns on year two of Lashley and, and losing the second scrimmage with a non-dominating front four? Um, let, let's talk about year two of Lashley. Uh, concerns, no, but th they've got to be better than they were a year ago. Ninth in rushing. I know they took strides from being last the year prior. I think they've got to run the ball better. Look, if you've got a quarterback that can run the ball better, you like your running backs, why are you ninth? So I think... I think they've got to be better there. I think you will see a better offense if they do run the ball. I think, in particular, all three of those guys have got to break runs. I know the offensive line plays a big part in it, and, and certainly they need to be better. In certain games, they certainly needed to be better. But I think these backs, it's time. Like once you get your hand off and um, and there's opportunities for big plays, it's time to make them. And I think all three of those guys would tell you the same that they feel like they they left some big plays on the table last season. I think I think if you're talking about an offense where it needs to improve, um, in particular where it can improve, I think the running game is, is where it starts. And I think they can have a better run game. I'd be surprised if they struggled again. Um, they're they've got backs that they should not be middle of the pack. Um, so and and a, and a quarterback that runs the ball. So with those factors, you, you've got to be better than than nine. So I think that's the biggest improvement. I do think Dier has some more passing ability. Um, I do think the loss of Brevin Jordan hurts. I think this team can take a step back. I know people are excited about Will, um, but just that dynamic that he had there at tight end. So also too, if you guys remember, I think you guys do. Last season started so slow with the passing game, so a little bit more consistent early in the year. I think they could have a better um, statistical output there. Okay, here we go. Ronald, what's going on? Starting front seven. I touched on the linebackers. I, I felt very uh, kind of wishy-washy for sure, and I hate being that when, when I'm asked direct questions, but I think you can kind of understand why it's a little confusing what they're doing at linebacker. I, I do think it's going to be um, Gilbert Frierson. I think they like Amari Carter. Um, if I'm... You know, we'll we'll see how that that striker role um, kind of goes. I'm kind of curious because I know they've really liked Amari, um, at you know being on the field uh, at other spots. So we will see. Gilbert, I think, ha does have to play well um, to really have a, a large role or or the majority of the snaps there. Um, as far as the defensive line, I think you're looking at. If I were to guess, I think DeAndre Johnson, Zach McLeod to start with John Ford and Nessa Jade Silvera. If Nesta, you know, does have to miss more time, he was back out at the scrimmage. Good sign. I think you could see Jared Harrison Hunt in there uh, for Nesta. And then also, I know Jafari Harvey's there. I think he'll play a lot in the opener, but I think they'll go with those veteran guys to start it is my prediction there. Let's go. Yeah, Harry, linebacker for sure, question mark. And, I, yeah, I think it's a huge question mark. I, I don't think there's any question. I, I think... There is, and, and these guys um, have a lot to prove, and, and we will see. Yes, came down Austin, Austin Cave is a linebacker, but he's, bare, you know, again, third team kind of guy. Um, he's not with those top four guys. What else do we got here? Brandon, real quick on, on recruiting. I, I do think that this is an important year to win games, to prove to recruits um, you can be successful. I think at this point, we always judge um, if, if it's going well. We don't say, oh, it's going well, but it doesn't count. So I don't think you can say the same of, oh, it's uh, it's not going well. and You can't say, oh, it doesn't count right now. Um, they, they've got to be better. They've got to land better uh, prospects. They've, they've got to land more, and we will see how it plays out. I know that they're certainly in the mix for a lot of guys. Um, finishing second doesn't count for a whole lot um, with recruiting. It's the tough business of it. So we'll, we will see how recruiting progresses, but certainly um, they, they're looking to, to add uh, to the class. It needs to be a little bit better. Mason, I think you're a Miami fan anyways. Uh, I think, no, I, I know you like the Seminoles, but I know you're here all the time. I think it's great that you are. And I know you have a lot of fan fun with the fans, even being a big Florida State fan. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, I, I think you're, I think, I think Miami fans can get you turned here. And yeah, if Travis Hunter, everyone keep an eye and Mason, write that, write that down and got to give it. If somehow, if they don't, uh, get Travis Hunter, you guys got the receipts here on Mason flipping Warren, what's going on? 
I'm glad you asked about Mark Pope. I think, and I've said this kind of briefly, I think with Mark Pope and D. Wiggins, it's a little bit of the fact that a lot of people are down on him from a year ago, and I understand. However, I think it goes to one I think it goes both ways in that sometimes players get overhyped and I think sometimes players get overlooked so much and I think that's kind of what's going on with Mark and D and I and I'll stick with Mark since that's what you asked about. I think there's ability there. I think we see it in practice. I think he can contribute to the team. I think he can be a positive. I don't know if he's going to be um, lead the team in receiving. I don't want to proclaim that. However, I think he can be good in his role. I think it, it wouldn't surprise me if he does well and has productive plays. It wouldn't surprise me at all to have to see him have big games, 70 to 100 yards, like we saw at times last year. So as far as quiet, I do, I do find it interesting that the coaches have not talked. This is going back from the spring. They've not talked a lot about Mark and D, and they're not asked about him. And they're also not saying that – it's a big competition on the first team. Now, everyone has a battle and all these things, but from what we've seen on the first unit, it has been Charleston Rambo, um, and it has been Keyshawn Smith. And I find it surprising, and not that, not surprising, like it's not about my opinion or what the fans think. I'm surprised that the coaches are kind of looking at um, Mark and D, guys that got a lot of reps. I think D had over 500 snaps last year, which is a lot for an offensive player. But they've really, you know, went with these other guys, and it doesn't seem like they're really in the mix at this point to 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 be the top, uh, to be a starter. I do think they're on that second group. I think both of them can make plays. I think Mark, although quietly, I think he could, he's done well at times, and obviously at times we've seen him drop the ball. But I think all guys drop passes in practices. I've seen Charleston Rambo kind of deal with that lately. Um, so yeah, I think that Mark and D have a role. And, um, and and we'll see, and I think, and I know they've got a lot to prove, and I think they know that. I think um, fans are, are in general, I think even maybe even the teammates or coaches, that like, you know, if people are down on them, like if you're out there, then it's time to produce. And, you know, we will see how they do. They do have ability. Both of them can, I think, can have a role and, and do okay and be productive in the offense. And I think that's what you're hoping for with those guys. <laughs> I see boys. What do you think of the most valuable rookie by the end of the year? I'll go with Elijah Arroyo. I think he's a guy that will fit into that tight end number two spot. Um, I think all the other roles, unless there's some injuries, I think he will have the the most valuable impact impact as a rookie. Um, like I said, you know, and I like these other guys. I, I just think in terms of the role, I think that he has the largest role going into it. And I think it'll stay. I see his role staying. I don't see him getting past um, and I don't see him passing Will by any means, but I think he can have a productive, um, get some touchdowns and some yards in, in moments there. All right. I'm struggling. I'm falling back on my questions here. BBD, Will, what's going on? Quiet confidence. You recognize that uh, out of Manny. I think Manny likes that he has a, a, a team that he knows um, I think he likes it's a team that's a veteran team. I think he likes the competitiveness. I think he f- feels like he's got options a- across the board on both sides of the ball with the depth chart. And I, fe- I feel like he's touched on those in years past as he wishes it was a little bit better. But I think he feels good with this group. Okay, here's a good question. Mark, what's uh, Tyreek Stevenson start at corner? Okay, I would not be surprised if he does not start at corner. I would... I think DJ Ivy and Takori Couch are two guys that they like that have done well. I think Tyreek will play a lot. I think Tyreek will get an opportunity, um, certainly against Alabama. He's played against them in the past. Also, physical guy that they need. I think he'll play a lot in that game. He will get um, a chance to prove himself as an outside corner. I think the big thing to watch for with Tyreek in that game and for the season, because we've seen it at times, we saw it even in the spring game, but is the pass interference stuff. So he's got to be good on those, and some of that is going to happen as a guy that's physical and aggressive. However, I, I think another thing to watch for in that game too is ability to pick off a pass. You know, I was at that private workout earlier in the summer, and he was really working on that. And I think he's a guy that really knows – 
really has a good understanding of what's going on. Um, so while he not he might not start, I don't think that's a, a huge deal because I do expect him to play a lot. I do expect um, them to need a third corner or however you might see it. And if any of those guys struggle, I, I just think Tyreek is a huge part of the team, whether he starts or not, or one of those first two guys. Um, but, but I think those are the things to watch for. And maybe, um, you know, there's a chance that he, they could be a little bit, um, that, you know, just a little bit challenging there at, at corner. So, okay. What else do we got here? Bill, what's going on? Shout out to you for dropping in here. A lot of people here. Burnett is here. D Burnett's what's going on? TC's the quickest. Yes, he is. I think DeCorey Couch is an interesting player, and it wasn't a question to me, but I do want to say I think he's an interesting guy this year. Um, I think, you know, turn the corner type of guy, year three. Um, you know, I, I'm curious to see what's going to, who's going to intercept passes on this team. It, it hasn't happened very often. Bubba Bolden has won each in each of the last two years. I think if you guys saw the ACC network feature, uh, DR King kind of joked about him saying he wasn't going to call him Bubba unless he picked off a pass, but um, in practice, but we we will see. I'm, I'm very curious to see who's going to pick off passes this year. And if it's a guy like Tyreek, then he's. I, I definitely think he, his role will elevate if he can kind of prove to be a playmaker in that sense. And I do think he's got that potential. Is Sam Brooks 100? percent No, he's not 100. Um, percent I don't think he'll. I don't think from when he got back out there at practice in the fall that he's going to be able to get thrown in that in there, get 100%, and pass all the guys in front of him. So I don't think you'll see much of him in the opener. Um, what else have we got here? Just looking at the questions. Bear with me here. Okay, I'm just scrolling. Okay, I, I'm caught up here on the questions, I guess. Okay, I do want to... Let's let's do this. Let's go to um, let's do 15 more minutes of this. I, I hate to run long, but I but I know I I'm missing a lot, and I know you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I will definitely try to get to some of these things moving forward with the instant reaction and the live commentary um, that I've done in 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 practices there. Caesar wants to know about Restrepo. I touched on that. I I do think. Um, he's on that second group. I think he's at that slot receiver, kind of mixing in with Mark Pope a little bit behind Mike Harley. They obviously want to go with Mike quite a bit. Um, we will see. I, I know they like Restrepo, that he's done well in some of these practices. I think there's times, to be frank, I, I know many of you are excited about Xavier, but there's been times where I feel like that he um, is leaving plays on the field either dropping passes or not coming up with catches. So there's been a little bit of inconsistency, again, with what I've seen at practices. So we will see. I do think they like him. Um, I think he's part of that top seven group that um, really at this point consists of, all, consists of all of the returners. Other than Daz Warsham, um, who I do like in, in flashes, I think he's got a chance uh, down the road in, in his future, just not 2021 at this point. Um Mason, I don't have anything on recruiting on both of those guys. I know people are excited about both of those guys. I think in general with recruiting, I'll touch on it a bit. If, if Miami's going to do well with the recruiting, I think they, they've got to you know really do well with either somehow pull off the upset against Alabama or beat North Carolina, really gain a lot of momentum with their win total this year. I think that's very important in, in recruiting. I think that will really help because I think some of these recruiting relationships are good but I think they've got to turn the corner and get some wins to maybe turn the corner on these guys, um, get some of these recruits here. Charles, I think that's a fair. I think that's fair. Um, I don't think you're overreacting that this could be the worst pass rush in the Manny Diaz era. And I assume you're talking head coach and defensive coordinator. I think that there's a concern that who's going to rack up sacks in this group. Is there even a guy that that can have one of those seasons that Trent Harris did? You know, I touched on Joe Joe Jackson and Jonathan Garvin, and you know Chad Thomas was productive, and this is kind of moving past Quincy and, and Jalen, but other guys that, that have done well, and we will see. Um, I think Zach McLeod's got a lot to prove. I, I think many of you aren't expecting much from him, so we will see. He's excited about the position. They do talk highly about him. We will see. 
Um, DeAndre Johnson, we've not seen a lot of play to Tennessee. Um, we will see if he can be one of those productive guys. Um, and if not, and then Jafari Harvey, he's a guy that we heard a lot of positives a couple years ago as a freshman. Last year couldn't get it going. And I just don't think we've seen enough. Um, he didn't earn a big role last year. And we just, you know, we're kind of waiting. You know, it, Harvey certainly has some athletic ability and could really turn the corner. Um, maybe he's the guy that you're looking at that could help um, with the defensive line, the defensive end, with the pass rush, turn the corner and, and have one of those productive seasons. Um, but again, it's a defensive end group with a lot to prove. There's no doubt about it. Um, okay, so this is a good question, uh, Justy Martin, about uh, do you think Kitchens will start a game before James Williams because he's leading in preseason interceptions? Uh, it's it's hard to say about. I think they'll, they're kind of going to be on a similar timeline. I think highly of James. I don't think he's a guy that, that struggles with playmaking ability. Um, I think you saw that last year. I think you've seen it in his career in high school. So I think he's going to be fine um, w- with, with that. I, I think I touched on his work ethic. So as far as the spot start, it, it's hard to say. Um, who will make that at this point? I think that if they had to go with a younger guy, I think a guy like Brian Balaam is a guy that they used last year. I think they'd probably go with him over kitchens. I think kitchens and James, just because of their, the same age. Um, I don't see that, that kitchens would be ahead of them. I think that they'd actually go with, with Balaam in terms of a young guy. Okay. Dennis, less designed quarterback runs this year. Wouldn't you think the backs should have better opportunities? Dennis, I think they're going to have better opportunities because they want to run the ball. I think they, I think the coaching staff has looked at last year. I think Rhett Lashley, in part of admitting that they want a workhorse back, I don't think he likes how the running backs were handled last year. I don't think he likes that they didn't run the ball as well. I think if you and I say that because also not just because of how he's talked about it, but if you look at his career. He wants this power spread. He wants to run the ball. He knows it's important. Um, I think they like the running backs they got, and, and I think that they want to make an emphasis. And I think they w- will run more because they want to. The, it's a point of emphasis for them. So we will see how it shakes out. And again, a lot can change with the opener. I think you know maybe we'll see how things progress. It's hard to know exactly um, where this team will be um, with the running game. Uh, maybe, maybe Appalachian State. Maybe you're looking at that Michigan State, how they run there. Uh, Virginia, UNC, can maybe th- three of those other um, Power Five schools after Alabama. I, I don't know, but just definitely keep an eye on it there. Wants to know about T. Rob and its colorful language. I think I've actually slipped up and had some um, on there. Um, I try to catch that just because I don't know who's watching. Um, but 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 certainly it's there. It's part of um, getting that live commentary. Like I said, the sights and sounds of practice. Um, but if there is a way I could cut it out, I certainly try to. Um, also, I will say too, we're not always real real close to um, being able to hear all of it. Um, so um, sometimes the mics don't always pick up on it. All right, Mason, take care. Good luck on your channel. Want to hear more about that alpha gaming. Okay, D. Burnett. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he's a better DN. We've not seen McLeod in live action enough um, to know what, what all he's about there. Um, but we'll see. But I'm just relaying what the coaches say in, in terms of they definitely like McLeod. Charles, what's going on? Um, I, I'm glad you, you watched the videos. It, it, like I said, I always appreciate everybody for taking the time to view the um, things that are posted that I post on the channel, especially because some of this stuff is new or, or different. Um, and some of the times, quite frankly, uh, I don't feel like I'm, uh, I'm kind of struggling through them. So I'm kind of working through some, um, you know, different things with, with trying to make them good. So appreciate the patience and, and glad you're, you guys are working and hopefully things get better and, and understand them a little bit more. Like if anybody, just real quick, if anybody saw the instant reaction today, Practice changed, and they're practicing in the morning. And I left my sunglasses in the car, and I'm going to have to wear sunglasses because I had to do multiple takes just to get through that video. Um, so that's just something I had to learn because um, I was not doing it in the shade, and, and I, I just can't do that. So I will be definitely trying to wear sunglasses moving forward. So learn, live and learn and try to make these things a little bit better than the last time. Warren, what's going on? Do you think it will be a breakout year for Gilbert? 
I don't know. We've seen a lot of Gilbert already. I don't know what more else he can do um, in terms of taking a jump. I think he's what we've kind of seen last year. He had a big role, and then the year before, he was in quite a bit too. Um, I think maybe just the steady player or more consistent um, play, I, I would be surprised if it's one of those true breakout years where he's just a lot better. Um, but we'll see. Um, we'll see for sure. Jason, what's going on? Okay, so any leads on vintage home orange? Man, I don't I don't know anything about that. Definitely check eBay. I'm not sure about that. Maybe somebody else can help you guys. That's a good question and one I definitely don't have an answer to. Flamingo, I don't know how much has changed when you mentioned running the ball. Running um, ball, we have to establish a passing game in order to keep defense honest from sacking the box. Definitely kind of goes hand in hand. You kind of wonder, do you have to pass well to set up the run? Every, obviously, everybody's talked a lot of, over the years with football in general. you got to run the ball to set up the pass. Um, I just think they want to have a productive run game. I think they want a balanced one. I know they really like what they have in Dieric with, with throwing the ball, but I just think that they really want to, to run the ball. I think they want to be a balanced offense um, and improve their running game. So I think it's going to help. I think it'll help out the passing game for sure. Yep, and get the deep threat going for sure. I, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I think it's very important to have a balanced offense. I think all teams would like to if they could, but if they don't, if they feel like there's a weakness um, in one or the other, they got to go to their strengths. And I don't think Miami feels that they have a weakness in the passing game or in the running game. I think they've got to, they feel good about both. Um, and I think that, that that is where the strength of the offense can be. Not that one can be great. I'd be surprised if one is. Um, I, 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 I just think that the best thing, the best case scenario for this offense to be successful is for it to be balanced. And that includes with the passing game, finding, uh, different guys, uh, different receivers, the tight end group and getting the running backs involved in the passing game. Any dominant sign? That's a good question. Any dominant signs on the offensive line? I've not seen that. I think there's in spots. I think there's encouraging things. I'm very curious what, to see what Devon Donaldson does this year. I'm very excited to see what he looks like. I've been very impressed with how he how he looks in practice, and I do think he was their best lineman when he played um, a couple years ago. And I think there's a chance he's better than that. Um, so I think that's a good sign. I think that can definitely help them. Okay, so just about five more minutes and we'll wrap this thing up. Um, I definitely appreciate it, but there's a lot of people on here. I definitely appreciate all the questions. I'm glad the chat is working and the audio. What else do we got here? Question about Chase Smith. You think he will get some snaps? I think Chase Smith is a, a young guy for the future to watch for. I think he's a guy that if he continues to hit the way he's hitting, continues um, to increase his strength and ability. I think he's definitely going to be a linebacker moving forward. Um, right now he's still working at, at striker. Um, I just think he's a, he has a chance to be a, a linebacker um, moving forward. And I think he's one of those guys on special teams. Definitely keep your eye on 41. Tyron is here. Tyran, Tyron, I apologize, Mackie. Okay, I think Keyshawn is going to have a good year. I do too. I'm curious to see on his production. I think he's an easy target, easy guy to say breakout player of the year. I'm just, you know, I'm curious how a guy goes from two catches the year before to to really being that top guy. Um, but that's where they have him. And he's looked really good in, in practices. They like his speed. Um, I think he'll face some adversity, some ups and downs, because he's going to be in a way different role than he was a year ago. Um, I think he has a work ethic and, and the mindset to work through these things. I think you guys will be impressed with his um, his downfield thread and and things like that. So we will see what what Keyshawn does. Um, and I think he he can. He certainly you're hoping for guys like Keyshawn to have good years moving forward because you'd like for him to not just be good this year, but really elevate and to be in one of those upper echelon type uh, receivers moving forward in his career. And I think it starts this year with have a solid year in his role. Do you have any plans of doing a video article with any Alabama reporters before the game? Charles, what's going on? And yes, so I, I, if you don't remember, I did one with Charles, po Charles Potter of um, 
with Alabama, Bama Online. It's in 24-7 network. I caught up with him before fall practices start to kind of get you guys, uh, to kind of give a little bit of outlook on Alabama, throw in some Miami stuff with it. I was actually thinking about catching up with him mid-fall uh, camp, but but that's kind of passed, and I, I'm just going to wait till. Um, next week. Um, I have not reached out to him recently, but definitely will do that. I, I'd like to reach out to him. I thought it was good. If you haven't seen that, you can go back and, and search, um, like I said, Charlie Potter inside the U. If you search that on YouTube and look for the channel, um, you can watch that interview. It's about 15 minutes. I, I think it's pretty quick, but I think it's a good um, a good sense on where Alabama was at going into fall camp. Uh, I think that's a good sense. So definitely want to do that. It's a good question. Big Rocco, Malik Curtis, speed standout. It, it looks good. Um, I've not seen him you know, completely break off and, um, anything crazy, um, but I know people are excited about him, so we will see. He's another guy on special teams. Um, I think he's a guy that I wouldn't expect him on the return game early in the season. Um, I think they're just getting him acclimated and things like that. I think they've got other guys they would go with before him. But I think maybe as the year goes on, maybe he's a guy that they um, they, they work in. But I think in general, maybe as a role as like a gunner uh, on special teams units there covering punts, I think maybe you could see 16 out there. Juan, okay, do you th- I think that's a good question. Just a few more, and I think this is great. Do you think Jalen Rivers is the real deal? You know, one of the things that stood out to me last year, even though he wasn't in there, they really, the coaches really talked about how he's a perfectionist, really works hard, wants to be good. And I, I think those are all important qualities for a young player. I think he's got a chance to be the real deal. I don't know if it's going to come this year, um, but I think he's going to be a starter. I think he's going to start um, all the way through. I think he's going to be good enough that even when Ja'Kai Clark is healthy, I think it's going to be tough for Ja'Kai to unseat Jalen at that guard spot if I were to make a prediction. Um, I think that also not just that Jalen um, has a good mindset on a good approach to, to wanting to be good in those things, but I think physically he looks good. Um, he likes where he's at, maintaining at 325 pounds. Um and he said that's quite a bit lighter than where he was when he arrived. I remember when he, he arrived um, there in those 2020 practices before they were cut short. Um, and yeah, he definitely looked like a guard and, and he had some good, you know, some bulk to him, I guess, um, some extra weight. And he looks a lot, uh, I don't want to say slimmer because he's an offensive line that weighs 325 pounds, but he's just a solid, solid built guy. Um that, that looks good at guard. And, and I think he's got a chance to be a real deal because he's got a good mindset. And now he physically just in year two, he's already kind of feels like he's at where he wants to be. So now it's about man t- maintaining and he's going to get plenty of reps. I definitely like him at guard. Um, right now I will, I will say that drop in a few more questions, just a few more. And I, I will wrap this up, let you guys go. I went 30 minutes later than expected. Once again, I appreciate everybody here. Dennis, do you see James Williams' career at UM marrying Isaiah Simmons' career at Clemson? Um, with safety moving to linebacker, I think the biggest thing, a lot of people ask about that. I always kind of think back on Ray Ray Armstrong, and um, a guy that played safety, came in with hype, um, really athletic guy, top 25 recruit, if I remember right. Um, stayed at safety, um, you know, had a productive career at times at UM. But I'll never forget a, a conversation I had with Randy Shannon after Ray Ray left and really felt like Ray Ray should have been a linebacker. And, and that's obviously where he played in the NFL. Um, and basically, he, even Randy as the head coach felt like he should have been a linebacker, but it's up to the player. And if James wants to be a safety, I think he could be a good safety from everything I've seen. Um, I think if he wants to play linebacker, he could play that. Um and we'll see. Um, we will see for sure. A lot of times guys will, will will go with one position for their first year and then see how it goes. I don't know James personally to know how he is um, with his weight, if it's one of those things that it really is a struggle to, to, to stay light as a safety because you don't want to be too heavy um, with that 6'5 height. And I think that's with Ray Ray. He did, I did talk to him about that at one point when he was an NFL player just – um, he was just a, a guy that could put on weight a lot easier. So it was always hard to, to stay down. So I think that'll be a thing. Does he want to? And then how he is with his weight. 
how easy it is for him or how hard it is for him. If it's easy for him to maintain at where he's at, then he definitely looks like a safety out there. And, and um, I think he can cover ground and, and do all the things a college safety needs to do. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Let's see. Um, I'll, I'll end on this. Coach Sim or two questions I'll do. Read Simpson and T-Rob. Between Coach Simpson and T-Rob with Manny at the helm, do you think this defense will be better than 2017 defense? Um, I have a hard time. Honestly, I have a hard time saying that. I, I think that that 2017 team had playmakers. They were really good at linebacker, and this group um, – looks to be a struggle at linebacker. I think unless you have good linebacker play, unless things change, it's hard for me to say that they'll have the same defense. Um, and then like we touched on the guys on the defensive line, the tackles for loss that they were able to pile up in 2017. Um, I have question marks if, if this group can do that, but that's what's great. All these guys have experience. They are out to prove themselves, and we will see how it goes. Big Al wants to know, is Ed Reed around the program? So we have been... Um, at, we've been able to be at six practices this fall, and we did see Coach Reed out there. I know we saw him one time. Um, maybe he's been out there more. Um, obviously, he could be out there when we're not out there, but we're out about half the practices, and we, we've seen him there. So he's around the program at times um, to answer your question. Flamingo, okay, I'm going to wrap everybody up. Appreciate everybody for watching. I, I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, it's great that there's so many people on the live stream. I have not done one of these in a long time. I know once again, there's a lot of people doing great work with their streams and I'm just trying to, to get in on this and answer any questions you guys have, things I'm not addressing or things you might've missed, um, with some of these other things. Stay tuned to the channel, um, instant reaction. Uh, I'll keep those things going. If you guys like those, the live commentary, I'll try to keep up on those too and, and really focus in on some groups. I feel like I've done some of those, but Okay. Appreciate everybody. Um, appreciate it. Uh, recognizing the hat. If you have any hat suggestions, um, definitely let me know. I've got some new ones on the way once again. Thanks, everybody. And uh, much love to you, Jay Blaze, and the rest of the crew that stopped by. Thank you. Have a good one.